Well, at the end of the uh, study this morning, Robert said he wasn't quite sure where he would go next. And I can, I can really relate to that. Uh, as Alice and I have been, you know, we travel and, and minister all over. While we were in England this past year, I kept getting invitations to go and teach at small groups, you know, to teach for an evening or a day. And it's a very serious a responsibility to seek the Lord as to what to speak. You know, it says in Proverbs not to lean on your own understanding. I don't want to figure out what I should say. I want to hear from the Lord what I should be speaking. So this one day, we were going someplace I don't even remember where. And I, kept, I just couldn't get the sense of what, what part of the Bible, what verse or what chapter God wanted me to speak from. So I was having this conversation with the Lord. That, that's called prayer. And I, I was just having this conversation with the Lord. And I said, Lord, I, you know, what part of the Bible? He said, all of it. All of it. Well, I don't know how long we had with these people, but I'm trying to think, okay, how do you get from all of it? All of it is from Genesis 1 to Revelation 22. That's the Word of God. And then all of a sudden something began, that the Holy Spirit began to show me something. And that's what I wanted to share this morning, perhaps this afternoon, and perhaps this evening with you guys. <laughs> The entire Bible, from Genesis 1 to Revelation 22, and the entire history of man from beginning to end. So if one's going to do that, the logical place to start is in the beginning. Genesis 1, in the beginning, God created. See, because God said, let us make man in our image. So God's purpose was to make us, to make you and me. And he, he built the earth. He created the earth, the heavens and the earth, to be inhabited by man. And he created the fish of the sea, the birds of the air, the tigers and lions and bears, the puppy dogs and kitty cats to be companions to man. And, and he created them and said, well, they'll all bear after their own kind. In other words, kangaroos give birth to kangaroos, right? Giraffes give birth to... That's God's plan. And then it says that he formed Adam from the dust of the earth and breathed life into him. You all know this stuff? Okay. I mean, none of this is complicated. There are simple truths in these complex times, let me tell you. So God formed Adam, and he breathed life into him. And he took him and he placed him in the garden. That garden where there were the trees, the two particular trees, right? The tree of the knowledge of good and evil and the tree of life. He built Adam, or he took out of, out of Adam, he took Eve to make a suitable helpmate for him. And then you know what happened. Do you? Adam sinned. Adam sinned. God had made Adam in his own image. Adam looked like God. And he sinned. You know, in the New Testament, if you see it, there's a lot of deformity. You see people with withered hands. You see people who are lame and halt all through there. That's deformity. But we heard this verse this morning a couple of times. Man looks at outward appearance, but God searches the heart. Sin is deformity. There is no greater deformity in mankind than sin. So Adam sinned. He went from being formed to being deformed. And God took him and Eve and put them outside the garden, away from the tree of life, and put a guard, put the cherubim there with a flaming sword so they couldn't get back to the tree of life. And it says that Adam knew Eve and she conceived and bore a son, Cain. Now, how many of you here have heard and said, oh, we're all made in the image of God? That's one of the biggest lies you'll ever hear on the face of the earth. We're all made in the image of Adam. Remember? You give birth after your own kind. 
Adam had become deformed, they gave birth to a deformed child. Because he was born with a stain of sin on him. Just like you were. Just like I was. All of us. We're not, we didn't come into this world in the image of God. We came into this world in the image of Adam. That's why Jesus said you have to be born again. You have to be born again to get rid of that stain of sin that came part of your DNA from, from Adam and his sin. You were born deformed. Not in the image of God, but in the image of Adam. Everything went wrong. But God, in His infinite mercy, kept bringing the truth. The truth has always been there. You know, it says in Romans that, that His creation proclaims Him. The heavens proclaim the glory of God. So we're without excuse. The truth has always been there and evident. The problem has been, oftentimes, that that serpent, a liar by nature and the father of lies, who lied to Eve in the garden and said, you can make yourself like God, kept on lying. He hasn't stopped lying yet. I don't know if you have you noticed that. Even from... <laughs> okay. This is actually going out. One of the great, greatest places to find lies is in religion. This isn't about religion. The Word of God is about the truth. It's about spirituality. It's about a relationship. It's not about religion. It's about relationship. Okay? Let me give you an example. In Ezekiel 22:28, this is just one, one example. God said her prophets, talking about his people, Jerusalem, her prophets have smeared whitewash for them seeing false visions and divining lies for them, saying, thus says the Lord God, when the Lord is not spoken. He kept saying, you can make yourself like God. You can make yourself right with God. Do these things by your works. You'll make yourself right with God. You can't do that. You see, what happened was that man went from being formed in the image of God to being deformed and then being misinformed. And there's no... Religion has always been the great misinformer from the time of the religions, the false religions that came out of Babylon to unfortunately too much of it going on in what calls itself the church of God today. So Adam, you, I, went from being formed in the image of God to being deformed to being misinformed. But hallelujah, our God is a merciful God. Our God is a graceful God, and He has from the beginning had a plan. And the plan was that we would live in His presence with Him for all time. That was His plan. So, you all know this verse? This is the Bible. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that whosoever believes in Him might have eternal life to be back with Him. So he sent Jesus Christ into the world. And through the work of Jesus Christ, not through anything that you do, because there's nothing that you could do, but through the atoning work of Jesus Christ, we were reformed. Whoever would receive that. Whoever would re believe. So you could go from being formed to deformed to misinformed to being reformed. Hallelujah. And it happened with the work of Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ, who came into this world. You heard that verse this morning. The Word was made flesh and dwelt among us. And He went to the cross. He died. He was buried. And hallelujah, He was resurrected. Praise God. How many of you know about the empty tomb? Raise your hand if you know about the empty tomb. No, it was not empty! That tomb was not empty. Oh, Jesus wasn't in it. When the apostles got there, they ran to it, they looked in, and there were the grave clothes. There was something in that tomb. See, Jesus came out and left behind the grave clothes. Lazarus, on the other hand, who is an image of us and what God has done, because God, Jesus Christ, stood there and called Lazarus out of death, called Lazarus out of that grave, called you and I. That's what it says in Isaiah 43. We've been called by name. So Jesus stood there and with a loud voice, he shouted, Lazarus, come forth. 
and Lazarus came forth, wrapped in the garments of death. Jesus came into new life, into that new life, out of the grave, and left the grave clothes behind. You and I came out into that new life that Jesus called into, wrapped in the garments of death. Your old habits, your old traditions, your old way of thinking, your stinking thinking. And tell me that's not true. That's why the Word of God, the Holy Word of God, the Word of God that can change us, says that you are not to be, you have to be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Now it says, Romans 12. So you've got to be from formed to deform, to misinformed, to reform, to transform. You got to be transformed by the. You got to start thinking different. And you want to know something? This is the only part you got to do. You are a sinner because all men are sinners. Even if you came in and you didn't do anything wrong, you carried that DNA from Adam. You were misinformed, but it was the work of Jesus Christ. You didn't save yourself. The only part you've got to play is to be transformed by the renewing of your mind. What you have to do is feed on that word. Feed on that word. Until the day you were saved, you were feeding on the lies of, of Satan. And you've got to realize that. You learned everything wrong. There's two kinds of wisdom in the world. Read it in James. It says that there is wisdom from above, and it says if any of you lack that wisdom from above, let him ask of God who gives freely to all men. But the other kind of wisdom is earthly, natural, and demonic. That's what you came in with. That's what you were taught with. That's what you knew before the day you were saved. And now we have to take thoughts captive to the obedience of Jesus Christ. Did you not say this this morning in the study? And we have to take that word of God, feed that word of God, and then start taking our thoughts captive to the obedience to the word of God. So that you are transformed. That's your part. And you have to do it if you are going to walk in the newness of life. Jesus Christ gave you new life. It should have and bring with it a new lifestyle. And that takes a renewed mind. So you've got to be transformed by the renewing of your mind. That's a fact. You know, it says in 1 John, that when Jesus, we see Jesus as he is. When we see Jesus eye to eye. And you want to know something? We're going to see him face to face. I think it's going to be soon. That's just what I think. We're going to see him face to face. And all of us who believe and see Jesus Christ face to face, it says when we see him as he is, we will be as he is. Somebody ought to say, praise God. I'm looking forward to that myself. Talk about all of the, the squeaks and the groans and all the stuff going on in our bodies now. You're going to get a new one. Hallelujah. We'll put off the imperfect and put on the perfect. Hallelujah. That's something to look forward to. That's why you should be saying, even so, come Lord Jesus. And this is the great promise of God. You know, it says that Satan devises it as a plan, but God thwarts it and turns it to his own purpose. It's always been God's purpose. He has always had this under control. The promise of God in that great chapter of Romans, chapter 8, Paul says, for whom he foreknew. And you want to know something? You're sitting here this morning and you have accepted Jesus Christ. Your name was written in the Lamb's book of life from before the foundations of the earth. He foreknew you. And whom he foreknew, he predestined. To be conformed into the image of his son Jesus Christ. Back looking like God. Back in the image of God. You got to go from being formed to deformed to misinformed to reformed to transformed to conformed. Back in the image of Jesus Christ. That's your destiny. That's your destination. That's God's promise in your life. That's what it's all about. That's the history of mankind. Going from that place of sin. Go into looking like Jesus Christ again. Looking like God. Being in the image of God. That is what awaits you at the end of the day. You're looking more like Jesus every single day. You know why? Because of His promise. He is changing you. He is transforming you. Bringing you from glory to glory. He is taking all the stuff in your life that doesn't look like Jesus, and He's chipping it away. 
The apostles, he had sent them out. They came back. They were excited. Christians are supposed to be excited. I don't know if you know that. You go into a lot of churches, you never think that. But I'm telling you, we're supposed to be excited. Because of what he's doing. They came back, they were excited. We cast out demons. We did miracles. We healed. And he said, don't let that excite you. Be excited that your names are written in the Lamb's Book of Life. That doesn't depend on how you feel. It doesn't depend on how hot or cold it is. It doesn't depend on whether it's sunny or raining. Your names are written in the Lamb's Book of Life. And if that doesn't excite you, you better get on your face before God and let your mind be renewed. You are destined to be conformed into the image of His Son, Jesus Christ. That's your history. It's not just the history of mankind. It's your history. You were born into this world a dirty, rotten sinner. That's a fact, Jack. Oh, we're not supposed to be offensive. I was a dirty, rotten sinner. When I was unsaved, I was very unsaved. I'm still repenting every day. But I know my destiny. Hallelujah. I know my history. My history is already written. You know, I can look in the mirror and I can see what I'm like. And Paul says, let a man examine himself. But the fact is, what the Lord says to me through his word is, fix your eyes on Jesus Christ. The author, the finisher, the perfecter of your faith. That's better than looking in the mirror. Because you look in the mirror, you see the way you are. You look at Jesus Christ, you see the way you're going to be. That's your history. That's your destiny. That ought to excite you. And if you're not excited about it, Go have a little conversation with the Lord. He's great at repairing you. So, anyhow, you go from trans you go from formed to deformed to misinformed to reformed to transformed to conformed. That's the history of mankind. That didn't take long. <laughs> oh boy, man. I said I was also going to teach the entire Bible. So if I started at Genesis 1. I got to end up at Revelation 22. That's the end. Okay, I want to read you a verse from Revelation 22. Revelation 22, verse 14. Blessed are they that do his commandments, that they may have the right to the tree of life and enter in through the gates into the city. Got kicked out back in Genesis, going back to the tree of life in Revelation. That's the entire Bible, from Genesis 1 to Revelation 22. And that didn't even take me 20 minutes, hallelujah. Yeah.